All right, we're still on the Housing Starts and Unemployment tab. Uh, and now we want to compute the cross-correlation function, very similar to the way we computed the auto-correlation function. Uh, so uh, in the table that starts at G10, we have a bunch of lag values, negative 50, negative 49, etc. And then we have this blank column in column H where we're going to put the cross-correlation function. Let's start at uh, a lag of 0, which is Excel row 61. And we'll say equals corel. And we want to say which two arrays to correlate. Um, so let's do housing starts. I'm going to click on B51 and control shift down um, and then lock that with dollar signs. Um, and actually, I'm going to lock just the rows, the 51 and the 794, because we might end up wanting to do more cross correlations later. Um, and then so that's my housing starts tab, uh, column, and then I'm going to say comma, click on C51, and control shift down all the way to C794, and then hit enter. And now if this was an autocorrelation, the autocorrelation would be 1 because we'd be correlating the data set against itself, but now it's a cross-correlation between two things. You can't guarantee that it's going to be perfectly correlated. It usually wouldn't be. Uh, we got negative 0.33. Uh, if we square that, we would get uh, about one third of 0.33, which is about 0.11, which is the R squared we saw before. Um, so that's the uh, the cross correlation at lag zero. And then to compute the cross correlation at lag one, we can just paste that down a row and double click on that formula. And now we can see the highlighted boxes are the same we were doing on the graph before, where the housing starts still starts in that first row of the data set, but the unemployment highlight box starts one row down. Um, and it is going off the end of the data set by one row, but then Excel just ignores that, um, that and it's correlated and it's related X value when it does correlation. So that's giving us the cross correlation at leg one. So we can fill that down. And so that's basically keeping the housing starts window fixed and moving the unemployment window, sliding it down as we go. So what else is there to do? Well, um, maybe instead of housing starts predicting unemployment after a few months, maybe unemployment is actually better at predicting housing starts after a few months. So we should look at the lag at negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3. So I can uh, go back to like zero, grab the fill handle and pull up, or you could copy and paste all the way up to row 11. And so now we're computing the cross correlation function, which is abbreviated as XCF rather than ACF, X standing for cross, basically. Um, and then we can plot the uh, cross correlation t uh, values against um, the lag. And then column I and column J again have that plus or minus 2 over square root of n rough guide to what would be statistically significant. Um, so we'll highlight all that and plot it. And so in the, um, the cross correlation function, um, its value is not 100% at cross correlation at a lag of 0. In fact, the cross correlation is negative at a lag of 0 here. Um, and it uh, for higher lags, it dips farther down, gets more strongly negatively correlated all the way down to 0 0.4, negative 0 0.42, and then starts increasing and goes up. Uh, it's roughly zero at a lag of 35, and then uh, hits a high of about 0.37 at a lag of 65. From zero into negative lag values, it starts going up towards zero, uh, hits a, men, a local max of about negative 0.08 at a lag of negative 25, and then comes back down um, to a, a correlation of negative 0.22 at a lag of negative 49. Um, so uh, does this tell us, if we look at that strongest correlation here, negative 0.42 at a lag of 11 or so, um, so does this mean that housing starts um, 11 months ago helped predict unemployment this month, or vice versa. We have to think about which way the lag is going. Um, and uh, I did it one way here. Someone else might have done it the other way in some software. It might be one way or the other. So you just basically have to think it through every single time. Um, 
I think in this case, positive lags meant that old unemployment predicts new, uh, old housing starts predicts new um, unemployment. So housing starts uh, 11 months ago are the best predictor of unemployment uh, right now. Um, so that's our first use of the cross correlation function. You can see uh, if I look at a lag of negative 50 here in H11, um, if I double click on that, it shows that I'm using a bunch of cells up above the data table all the way to the top of the spreadsheet in column C. That's why I had to have a bunch of blank cells there. If I tried to go uh, one more lag here, um, it would try to push that reference off the top of the data of the top of the spreadsheet and it gives me the uh, hashtag ref error. Um, so you kind of have to know how many lags you're going to do and leave that much room above the data table. Um, this is all kind of a unofficial way to compute cross correlation. You should really be using R or Python or something, but just to give the flavor of what we're doing, uh, we're using Excel. So the big two things to remember about cross correlation. Um, it's not always 100%. In fact, it's rarely 100% at a lag of zero, and it's not left-right symmetric for positive lags and negative lags. So uh, next time we'll look at the inflation tab.